Would you like your journey with Architect to spread far and wide and be inspired to embrace your passion, overcome your fears, and create stunning designs with the power of technology. Hello to everyone, this video is for you if you are completely new to Archicad or have never created a petrol station project in Archicad before. I understand that if you are new to this, this may appear intimidating. Welcome to our step-by-step -step tutorial on using Archicad Swag Flow to effortlessly create stunning designs for a petrol station project. We will create three modern petrol station design concepts from start to finish in this tutorial. We will learn how to design the side circulation layout, the quick shop, and the three different modern canopy designs using basic 3D tools. By the end of this video, I guarantee you, you will have all the skills you need to advance in architecture design with ArchiCAD and be able to tackle any type of architecture project with ease. Please check the link in the description to download the sketches, resources, and all the design concept project files used in this video to follow along with this tutorial. Without any further ado, let's get straight into Archicad. These are sketches that I've prepared for this demonstration. Like I said, check the link on the description to download these resources in order for you to follow along with this tutorial. This is more like a template is I've developed and placed some features that are specifically are meant to design project like this one. So we would have uh, features like if I can open uh, objects here, I can go to the object settings. You could see now we have uh, introduced some of the uh, objects or tools that are sp specifically for designing petrol station project. We have another folder here for human figures. We have another folder there for 2D site plant trees. We have a lot of stuff that we've just specifically injected to this template in order for you to carry out your project of this magnitude in Archicad efficiently. So check the link, like I said, in the description to download this to follow along um, with this uh, demonstration. So I will hit close to close this. You could see here under graphic override, we have also some um, override combination styles for graphics, uh, presentation in floor plan and 3D model. So it's also important. So we're not gonna bother much by setting out the pen sets for each element in Archicad or in this workflow. We're gonna just to overrule it with uh, these styles, okay? So in order for us to place an imaginary site or imaginary plot, we're going to use a mesh tool as it is uh, specifically designed for the terrain. So let's scroll down here on the design tool palette and activate the mesh tool. And uh, with the geometry method, which, which is the tools that decide or determine the placement of element. So I'm going to use the rectangular method so that I can just specify two points and place that. So I'll start with this point on the origin point and then draw it uh, diagonally from the first point and then I can now key in the dimensions for this plot. So it's going to be, um, the width is going to be 35 um, thousand which is 35 meters which is 35 meters right and then I'll use the downward arrow in your keyboard to access the height parameter which is going to be 43.3 uh, meters and in millimeters it's going to be 43,300 and then I'll hit OK to place uh, the uh, terrain so this is what we have I don't like to have it um, with the cover fill so if you zoom in using your mouse wheel uh, zooming in, rolling it in and out, that's where you can zoom. So I would select this and then come here on the project info box. You can also scroll your wheel to access other parameters that are not in the picture here. And then let's come here under floor plane in a section. I'm going to get rid of the cover fill. Let's get rid of the cover fill by unchecking this box. Right. So you, like I said, there's no point of you to set up your pen set because they are already over uh, root by our graphic override combination here. So even if you can change, nothing would happen unless you change this um, to no overrides. That's where the individualism of your pen style can uh, be at effect. So that's basically what we have now. What I need to do is to make sure the elevation markers are on a correct position. So I'll select this one and then control d in your keyboard 
to drag or move this outside your plot boundary like that and then i'll do the same to this side Control d to drag it outside like that and then I'm, i'll make sure it covers the range of the entire building so that my elevation can be fully projected in terms of the drawing so i would uh, stretch all this to cover the width like that perfect once you're done with this it's the time for us to now manipulate this uh, mesh uh, to create other elements so i'll zoom in here and then pick one of this point here and then in the pad palette i would activate the offset all edge uh, command let's do that and um, we can uh, key in the distance of which we want to do this offset but we want to carry a copy or to add a copy edit as a copy so i'm going to hit control in your keyboard to add a copy you could see now your cursor has a plus sign to indicate now we are carrying a copy so let's go ahead and key in the distance or on on which we want this to be so i'm going to use um, 800 millimeters perfect and then i'm gonna select the uh, internal or the the internal terrain and pick one of this edge more especially the side let's pick the edge and then this pet palette will pop out let's find offset edge okay so that we can offset this edge to all the way to the edge of the main mesh okay so once you're done with that let's zoom in again what i need to do is to select the inner mesh again and pick one of the or pick the edge to add a point or a insert a new node to this um, line so i'll do that and then click here to add i'll add another one somewhere here i won't bother much in terms of the distance or dimensions of these points because i want to just create a tiny ready for the entrance of this plot so i'll pick this point again and then change the command to move node so that i can move it uh, out by or down by 2.5 which is 2 1500 millimeters something like this and then i can now zoom in again and fillet or chamfer this um, corner by using the fillet sled chamfer tool and then let's just keep it at 800 radius and then i'll hit ok perfect that's what i want i'll move down to the other corner and do the same let's pick the edge and then insert a point insert the second point here again then move the point up by 2.5 or 2500 let's pick again this point to round the corner by 800 um, millimeters radius perfect that's create some of the entry and the exit of our site so if we check this on 3d let's check this on 3d this is basically what you have i want to select the inside uh, mesh right and then set the height of it to be 150 in the info box this is just to represent the paving because it's going to be our paving for the entire plot and then uh, let's find the the offset height and set it to be minus 300 because that will be the level of our driveway so once you are done with that let's maybe change also the structure which is basically the material i'm going to select um, concrete structural for this yeah perfect so if you check if you zoom in here you could see how it's been positioned so we need to subtract um, the main mesh from this inner mesh geometry in order for us to create a cleaner clear driveway so to do that we're going to use the solid element operation command by just right clicking in the space here and go to connect make sure you've selected something before you you, you go uh, this route all right and then click on solid element operation and uh, by default the the selected element will be added as a target in this case this is not our target our target is going to be the main mesh this is going to be the operator so let's edit as a operator here and then select the main mesh and do the same or add it as a target right the operation will be subtraction with upward extrusion so i'm gonna choose that here which is this one and then let's use or execute by clicking on this button perfect i don't like it to inherit the other attributes okay oh by the way we haven't changed the surface of our driveway so i'm gonna select it 
and then open its settings here on this icon and uh, let's override the top surface or we can also override even the edge so i'm gonna override these two surfaces change the top and then make sure you type for paving if we have paving let's say paving asphalt light and then i'll link all surfaces hit ok to apply the changes there we go this is basically what i wanted to create so we're gonna have another island here that will house our quick shop and then our parking next to it here so let's go back to our ground floor plan and then uh, do the same so i'm going to get rid of this window for now and um, in order for us to place the island i would need to have a guideline i want to use some measurements so what i need to do i can just activate the guidelines uh, tool and then or uh, click in this arrow and then create a guideline segment or you can just use alt plus l in your keyboard to uh to activate that so i would need a guideline from here that will determine the distance of this which is going to be 9.5 enter that will be my starting point of the island right so let's activate the i'm gonna use the slab tool for this so i'm going to scroll down here let's find the slab tool under the info box let's scroll down and find the structure set the structure to be just a basic um, structure for now and then the material should be concrete structural or you can uh, find something different because this is uh, uh, okay i think let's just use mesh for this um, example i'll pick the parameter of the outer mesh or the main mesh right and then let's keep it let's keep it under the structure of the existing or the default settings and then um, let's draw it from the guideline we've we've just drawn let's start from here and then go all the way to this uh direction which is the left side so i'm going to key in the dimensions of this um geometry or element which is going to be the island for our our quick shop so it's going to be um 15 meters going horizontal and then you access the vertical parameter by clicking the downward arrow in your keyboard and key in uh, five meters let's key in five meters which is five thousand uh, meters okay so i'm going to move this out by let's move this by control d in your keyboard and select this move it to the left by uh, it's supposed to be 1.5 and i'm going to do the same again control d and move it again by uh 6.5 right let's say 6.5 6500 okay so i'm gonna just measure to confirm the distance that i just created by by hitting m in your keyboard or you can just come here on the top uh, menu bar there's this measure tool here and then you can pick the distance you want to confirm it's eight meters of which this is what i wanted uh, let's move on by um, adjusting or manipulating this uh, geometry what i'll do is to add and let's let's just pick this edge and then use offset all edge or offset the edge all the way to the boundary like that perfect and then i'm going to add a point let's add a point somewhere here or you can just de de determine the distance of the point from here by putting your cursor here and wait for it to circle with the blue uh, circle and then you can now move it this side and you can see your tracker starts to count and then what you can just do is to key in the measurement in this case i want it to be 1.5 like that so if you measure or well, come here under measure if you measure this distance it's accurately positioned no what happened <laughs> sorry about that guys so we need to make sure this edge is 1.5 with well, this the distance between these two points are 1.5 so what i need to do is uh, to activate the guide by alt l like i said and draw a guideline of 1.5 perfect and then i can now move my point to the um accurate position okay so once i've done with this i'm, I'm going to pick the, this edge and uh 
activate the offset edge in your pet palette and then offset it all the way down like that by uh, a distance of uh, eight meters something like that perfect and then i can just uh, pick this corner just stretch or move the point something like this and then i can select this corner again round the corner by maybe 300 something like that okay so that creates the exit of the site this side will be the entry the entrance of the of the site okay i hope this makes a lot of sense to you guys we have to have the distance of uh, one meter i mean 15 meters or for the footprint of our our quick shop so i'm going just to use a let's just use a what you call a, a polyline tool i'll come here under documents activate the polyline tool and make sure the geometry method is a rectangle let's draw a rectangle of um, 15 meters by 5 meters that's the footprint of our 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 quick shop so i'm gonna select it and then move it back to somewhere here and let's yeah let's position it to this side and then move it back by maybe three meters okay so we basically have something like this and this will be just the island within or around our our apron so i'm going to move it back by or well, let's just move it this side pick this edge and then move it by um, 1.5 something like this and then control d again to move this or maybe cent centralize it with this so i'll just hover my cursor here so that it can pick this midpoint and then i can control d to pick it from the midpoint and then use um the use the shift and hold so that you can restrict it to go vertically like that and then i can identify the center of that perfect that's what i wanted and then from here this side i can maybe reduce it by uh, maybe 1.5 like that and then i can uh, curve this edge let's pick this edge and curve it by using the curve uh, edge tool in your pet palette like this i'll use the radius of three meters for turning ready of trucks and cars into the um, site okay so once we're done with that let's move forward again we need to create a parking here guys let's create a parking for two cars so the parking will be uh, 2.5 wide by 5 meters so if there are two is going to be 10 meters i mean five meters so i'm going to create a a line or a guideline let's hit alt l to activate the guideline and draw a guideline of five meters perfect so that will be our parking so it means now the parking has to be somewhere here where the footprint is going to be located so i'm going to control t and then move the building towards the parking here and then i can also create maybe an island between the parking and the building of one meter something like this okay and then uh, i can uh, pick this line pick this edge to insert a point that will be equivalent to five meters and then let's bring it or pick this edge and move it inside this edge by five meters that ultimately creates our parking so we have to now demarcate the parking in later stages so i have a resource that i've created here these are the markers the road markings it's just a slab tool that has been created under the structure of concrete material so if you open its um, settings you'd find i just changed the surface to be a white uh, uh, color so that to represent white markers on your paving so i'll just uh, pick that Control shift d to carry a copy and then uh, let's just put it here move forward by Control e to rotate it let's rotate it vertically like that and i will identify the midpoint of this parking and then the midpoint of the marker and Control d to move it right on the midpoint like that so i can now pick the edge and stretch this all the way to the five meters five meters 
parking okay I don't know why it doesn't look um, in line with this so what I need to do is to control D and move it up to in line with this uh, line and then I can maybe fix this there was a bit of discrepancies here let's pick this line and then offset it all the way to there to create our parking perfect so we have the two parkings and the footprint for our quick shop so let's move forward and create other amenities or some uh, indicative circulation um, to our site so we would have um, let's start by having the position of the palms as a sketch so in 3d we have something like this we just have something like that impressive right so let's go back to the ground floor and then what we need to do here like i said we need to show some circulation within the site and also indicate the position of our our pumps or our pump uh fuel pumps okay let's hit alt l to activate the guideline tool and then i'm going to start here and uh, let's uh, draw a guideline from from this corner guideline of 26,000 which is the which is going to be the length of our canopy right that that will be the length of our canopy from the canopy let's start positioning our our i'm gonna start positioning my fuel pumps right the stations so i would also use um a line that i have here no can i just use a line no let me just uh activate again alt l a uh, what you call the guideline okay and then i'm gonna pick or hover my cursor here on this guideline then draw it so let's do it, do it again then i can draw it this side and then i can determine to draw a new guideline like that so let's draw a guideline of 1.9 that will be the starting point of the fuel pumps okay so i'm going to use a slab to place this position they would have an island where they are going to be positioned they're going to sit on top of a slab that will be raised a bit maybe by 100 millimeters above the driveway pavement. so i'm going to come here under design two pallets let's find the slab tool activate it and then um make sure the settings it's um, concrete okay so i don't want to override the service i'll just leave it the way it is let's hit okay and i'm going to draw it by using geometry method of a rectangle let's pick the first point as i'm drawing diagonally to specify the second point i can now key in the dimensions for this the dimensions of this the width is going to be um 10 800 right and then use the downward arrow to access the height of it which is going to be a let's go in it's going to be 1.9 it's going to be 1.9 right perfect so yeah i think it's it's good like this what we need to do here is to um, bevel the edges i'll pick this edge and then click on it make sure you convert it into an edge in a, a curve like this of radius of 900 do the same to the other side 900 oh sorry sorry about that it's not accurate yeah something like this perfect so what i need to do now we have two of this so i would control shift d to make a copy of this um dock it alongside each other and then i can now control d to move it up and the distance between this is supposed to be 6.5 let's make it 6.5 that's the distance between the two uh, palms or the two stations so i'm going to use this i've created this as also markings it's made up of a slab again of a surface of paint or white paint so i'm going to um control shift d to uh, move a copy if you measure this it's just made for specifically to demarcate the position of the car within the pump which is roughly around five meters which caters more like a distance of a parking so i'm gonna Control shift d to carry a copy of this right and then uh, let's position it somewhere here go ahead and move it right on the edge and dock it on the edge of the island i can now create a distance between or a gap between this 
let's just have a gap of uh, maybe 200 what do you think perfect so and then I'm gonna align it to this edge okay so Control shift M to mirror a copy using the center point or center line of the the island like that okay and then i can select all of these lines group them Control g in your keyboard and then also Control shift d to carry a copy i'm going to use the base point of the midpoint of this island so that i can copy it or place it to the uh, the um, pump station perfect so that's basically what we wanted to create in terms of demarcation and then now what's left is to indicate it should be indicative um, indicate the access and the exit of the site so we can only achieve it by using some arrows and some markings within your within your your site drawing so i have already created the arrows which is this one i'll control shift m let's carry this I mean, so Control Shift D, sorry, to carry a copy, and then place it here to indicate as the entry of the site or the entries of the site. Let's Control Shift D again, move it to this site. This site is going to change. The orientation is going to change. I'm going to Control M to mirror it to indicate this is the uh, exit of the site. And I'm going to have two of this Control Shift D. Have another one here because. The ones that this one will cater for this cast coming from this pump and then that one for the other side right okay so we would have again the circulation the turning ready of trucks more especially trucks here so we need to indicate that and then we can have also another parking here for the long trucks for delivery purposes this side will be the pumps um, on the fuel tanks buried on the ground just to have it indicative you can um, draw a line um or markings in your your paving to indicate that's your your markings i could use this one i could just use this reuse this material Control shift d i'll put it somewhere here normally it will become it will be a size of a loading bay so if i say Control l and then the loading bay should be nine meters long so let's just go for nine meters okay and then i can now mirror this to the other side Control shift m mirror a copy i'll just pick one of this mirror a copy like that let's move it right to the nine meters length mark okay so that will indicate but it can be more than this because uh, nine meters caters for the track for the offloading track so i'm gonna just increase by three meters something like this and i can have some dotted lines um, in between here by using this line Control shift d and make a copy to the side what i need to do is just to align it horizontally or vertically with this and then run multiple copies by clicking one of the points and then use this multiply command so once you've come here on the multiplication window i'm going to use the drag just to drag this and multiply it so i'm gonna just hit ok let's use this point and then place it to this point that will determine our distance or be between the elements when you are doing our multiplication perfect so once you're done with that select all of them and then Control g to group them Okay, Control shift m again to mirror it to the other side like that okay i see there's the space the gaps between or, or, or on both ends are not um accurate or are not the same so what i need to do is to suspend all groups to select this all and make sure i centralize them within this space i can just use my eyes there's no problem with us there we go that's what we have okay so let's move forward again and, and finish off this uh, circulation layout so we have um, like i said we need to indicate the turning ready for tracks here so i'm going to use a what you call a spline tool to create that spline tool is good for creating free form and fluid uh fluid fl fluid uh, <laughs> lines in architect i like polyline so i'll start by here and then click one of the points but you have to control it uh guys you have to have 
control to that so i don't think this line the good part of it you can come and readjust the line geometry as well so i think i would have something like this and pick this point something like that this one i can add a point here in between so that i can control the level of this something like that okay if you are happy with the result you can now make a copy of this to the other side or offset a copy let's pick one of the points and then offset a copy and this has to cater for six meters or seven meters oh sorry i have <laughs> I needed to make a copy instead of uh, a instead of uh, just that let's undo and do the same add a copy by clicking control in your keyboard move it by five meters there we go that'll be our five meters but I don't think I should be somewhere here I can use let's just trim off this um, part by trimming off you can control and hold in your keyboard to activate the scissor tool and then i can now click on this it's refusing to why is it refusing okay again i don't know why it's refusing i think let's just do quickly do a, a quick one again i'm going to pick this point pick that point that one and then let's finish it off here so i can get rid of uh, this line and uh, transform it the way you want by adjusting these points and once you are done with that you can delete this and then let's now create a copy of this or offset a copy of this okay i think the first one i shouldn't have deleted this one let's just leave this one as it is perfect i can now maybe reduce it length to somewhere here yeah it makes sense it makes sense okay so now I need to use the markers. Let's use this line to, or this markings to show it on the surface. I'll just control shift D and move it here. Make sure they are aligned. I'll control E to align this like that. And um, control D to position it centrally. And then I can pick one of the points and uh, activate the multiplying tool this time around in this window we need to check the peak path before input because it's important while list was still under drag and the increment and spread um, input method so i would say okay but before you say okay make sure you say rotate to path because we want this element to rotate along the path geometry so i'll hit okay to apply and then you have to select the um, the curve first or the path first which is this line and then i would just place it here then i can start running my multiplication with this distance just like that this is magic okay once you place it i'd like to take advantage of the selection before completing the operation and then hit ctrl g to group this item because it will be a hell of a mess if i don't group them for future editing purposes i guarantee you so activate the suspend group and then pick one of this again control shift d to carry a copy to the other side and repeat the same process let's mirror i mean rotate it and position it the way it's supposed to be by the midpoint and then pick one of the points to activate multiply and uh, with this window make sure pick path before input is activated rotated to, to path also checked so hit ok and then start by picking the path first just like that and uh, let's indicate the distance in which we want this to be 650 is fine let's go this direction select all of them control group to group them okay so now what's left now is the arrows let's indicate let's have the arrows also here but the arrows i'm going to use uh, let's pick this line and uh, offset it right to the center where we want our arrows something like how oh, i can just delete this and draw my own curve let's just draw my own curve something like this 
and then i'll pick this arrow make a copy by Control shift d place it right on the beginning of this and position it like we did for the other markings in the center Control shift I mean, control e to rotate it along the path like that and pick one of the points to activate multiply just um, also use pick path before input and rotate to path um, uh, feature hit ok start by selecting your picking your path and then click you can identify or indicate the distance at which you want this to to be so just be like that Be something like this i can have make a copy of another one just here but this one has to be 90 degrees um line so i'm going to rotate it like that and then control have another copy there to indicate the circulation to our our plot control shift e to rotate a copy horizontally like that control d to move it to this point and then have another one control d let's have another one in between here control d again and have another one somewhere there all right so if we check this result in 3d we've covered a lot so far that's how your site is looking like so in the next chapter we'll be focusing on doing the quick shop right the quick shop and then we we'll move on to the third chapter by creating three different designs for our filling station or for our petrol station okay let's continue to where we left if you eyes uh, orbit around my site like this you would see there is a glittering of or triggering of the materials as you can see so we need to fix this before we continue with our quick shop so to in order for us to fix this we need to perform solid element operation to subtract um, these elements the markings from the driveway or the paving so to do that let's select the paving as our target because in order for you to bring the solid element operation in order for you to uh, or let the architect automate the process of editing as a target you have to select the element first before you bring the the tool so i'll right click and then connect solid element operation i have already a target edited which is the paving so now i need to select all the white markings so all the white marks make sure the suspend group is unactive so that it can select this as a group i'll just select this as a group these ones they were not grouped i don't know why for whatever reason let's do that this one for sure this should be grouped okay that's the importance of grouping guys you see now i'm struggling to select all these things once i can group everything once because these are just markings right and then add this as operator and change this up uh, the um, operation as subtraction with upward extrusion let's just zoom in so that you can see the magic and then i can hit execute wait for it now perfect we have now a clean lines without material in fighting for the uh, or fighting for the, the oxygen so it's amazing it looks fantastic so let's get rid of this window of the solid element operation and move it move on to the um uh, our our quick shop so let's go to the ground and to the ground what we need to do here is uh let's just escape perfect let's just zoom in here to the area where the quick shop is located and then i'm going to go to the design tool palette and activate the wall tool we're gonna jump straight into it by just creating some walls for our footprint so i'm going to change the geometry method to be a rectangular because it's going to be quicker and easier for me to place that the structure of the uh, walls are going to be basic and change this to be a brick material so let's go for brick material okay and then i can go for brick finish whatever brick you may uh want to use okay so like i said i've chosen the geometry method of a rectangle but i need to be very smart in terms of the reference location of 
the walls they will determine the position because they have to be within the footprint right so i'll start by this corner as i'm drawing wow they are on the right position the reference line location as you could see and then i can now click this um point or corner to place that so i need to demarcate the spaces to or assign or allocate the spaces according to the uh, the, the function of this quick shop here we're going to have the shop itself and then we're going to have the kitchen the change room and then the visitors toilets on the other side so let's quickly do that i would uh, activate the arrow tool and then um activate the suspend group because to select one of the elements of the walls um you have to unsuspend it because by default archicad would group all the elements that are uh, are coming from the geometry method of rectangle or multi multi points placement or geometry method so if, in order for you to access each or an individual of these walls you have to suspend groups so i'll hit ctrl shift d to make a copy move a copy to the right horizontally like that and then i'll key in the measurement to create this space this space is going to be um 2.5 it's going to be the ablution block and let's make the internal walls half thicker half thick half be half the thickness of the exterior walls. so it's going to be one 150 like that and then i'm going to also make a copy of this Control shift d to carry a copy horizontally like that and key in the space i'm creating space for the for the change room which is going to be three meters for the workers and then Control shift d i think let's add 500 on top Control shift d again to add a space for the kitchen this will be let's go for four meters perfect so we have both all of our spaces demarcated i will have another space let me just divide this into half because for female and male arrangement make sure the reference is on the center because we want to pick the the center of the space right something like this okay i think this side we're gonna have a full glazing so instead of having it uh like this we're going to trim off this wall and then get rid of this wall again or as well perfect so we're done with that let's move on and place some openings i'll start with the doors let's activate the door to um open its settings what we need to do is just quickly set a basic door for our internal or outside uh, doors i'll just go with this door 26 let's come here under hinged door settings select the door leaf of your choice i'll go with the style one change the handle to whatever handle style of your choice as well and uh, make sure the detail level for both 2d and 3d is on full change this to full resolution and for the 2d detail level let's make it scale sensitive and then i'll click in this arrow to access other parameters of this uh, door what another parameter that i'm looking at is the door as uh, the model attributes let's uh, make the surface to be uniform by clicking on this box or checking the box and then change the material to i'm just gonna go with the metal aluminium for for this let's just go for aluminium doors perfect what else we left let's go again to all the parameters and find floor plane and section what we need to do here is to set the show reveal to be uh, always right and then i don't like to use fields i'll get rid of the fields in the 2d plane okay once we're done with that everything is super you can hit okay but there's one last feature that i want to change go back again to all parameters and then let's find the opening lines I'm going to override the 2D symbol display in the floor plane and then change this to be a dotted or dashed line. So I can change this to the 2D and 3D opening line to this, even though I know it's being taken care of override combinations. So I'll hit OK to apply the changes. I'm going to have a door here. Let's have a door here for the for the change rooms. We're gonna have door here. For the toilets just have another one there oh it should open to the other side so i'm gonna select it and then let's mirror we'll pick one of the point let's pick the midpoint and then use mirror mirror it horizontal to the other side okay 
let's go ahead and add another door here opening to to the side oh there has to be in the same location same position so from the inside so let's just undo and place it there okay we would have another one for the kitchen here i have another one from the kitchen to the change rooms from the change rooms from the kitchen again to the shop something like this okay so we are basically done with the layout we can again go ahead and place some windows on this spaces but for this case i'll just leave the rest for you guys you can go ahead and place windows for the sake of this demonstration let's just leave it uh, as it is now to speed up the process you can have another glazing here for the kitchen another full glazing here for the kitchen it depends as well maybe we can have our glazing coming all the way from here to there if you want but let's just leave it the way it is so we're gonna activate the curtain hole tool to place our i'm not gonna set anything for now let's just change the geometry to uh this chain lock and then draw it from this corner and uh, no i think i need to be smart on this let's hit escape i'm going to start it right on the inside okay i'll hover the cursor here and then move it to this direction to determine this point and uh I'm going to move this direction i would make sure again from here to this side is two point is 230 yes and then we can now complete to the other side just like that right click hit ok to complete i can come back and readjust the distance by clicking on the blue line which is the reference of this curtain wall i'm going to offset only this edge to relatively closer to there to fix this issue of seeing the member uh, the, uh, the member which is the frame piercing through our wall let's go to the settings and change the place boundary frames to the inside that will completely take care of uh, this problem perfect so if we check all the sides it's great and i know by by default this will look horrible let's check on 3d the curtain will look horrible by default and i can because we just use default settings okay so to make it nice let's start with it again select it and then reduce its height i think the height is too much i don't want it to be all the way to three meters so if you scroll your, your wheel you access the parameters of other parameters of the curtain wall instead of three meters elevation let's make it 2.5 let's make it 2.5 like that and then we'll have a wall that go across there okay or maybe let's make it underside the slab and then say 2.8 yes 2.8 I'm going to select and change the surfaces of the walls because I don't want to have exposed bricks like this. So there are different ways of doing it. I would select this uh, wall and then uh, go to options, element attributes. Let's open the building materials. By so doing, by selecting this element, arcade material, building materials will be highlighted here of the element that is being selected on the on the file. In this case, these are the parameters. Or attributes of this material so if we check here of the surface we're using brick brown uh, bricks so i'm going to change this to maybe um, stucco let's type search for stucco check stucco oh i can just change the folder structure to just a plain structure like that so that i when i search stucco i have options available here I'll go with the rough stucco and then hit ok automatically all the walls will be changed um the the material okay so that's basically what i wanted us to achieve from the beginning so let's place a slab to roof this i'm going to go to the upper floor because that will act as our roof let's open it the first story and then um activate the slab tool there's literally nothing as it is at the moment because but what we want to do is to trace above the walls that we've placed already in order for us to create our, our roof slab so i'm going to 
right click on the ground floor uh, view and show this as a trace reference then we would have the ground floor elements appearing here i'm going to use geometry method of this and the structure it's fine let's change the thickness of the slab to be 150 and pick this corner all the way to it's going to be a challenge because here we don't have uh, that it's better we start it from this corner and then going all the way to that corner perfect so if you check on 3d you would have something like that okay obviously you would have um some uh walls above the the floor slab to cater for the drainage of this so for the other side i could just increase the height of these exterior walls to let's say instead of having it three meters it's been linked to the upper store i'm going to click on this arrow and then not link it and change this to be 3.5 high perfect so that will cater for the drainage of this slab and then i will pick parameters by alt and hold in your keyboard to activate this pick parameter tool and then click on this wall to activate the wall tool and its parameters i'm going to click here on this corner and draw the wall all the way here i'm supposed to take this corner something like that and then i'm going to select this wall pick one of the corner at the top to stretch it using the stretched height and reference with the height of the existing walls to clean up this joint i'm going to pick the point on the reference line and then activate the stretch length stretch it all the way to there that will fix uh that um uh discrepancies let's do the same to the side as well i'm going to pick parameters of this wall and pick it from here all the way and then restrict it to be on the uh on this line like that click it there i'm going to take it and then turn the reference location to the inside like that and then now uh, pick parameters of this wall and control alt to activate inject i'll inject it to this what happened it went up so let's see the height of this wall it's around uh, 2.6 i'll copy this uh, distance select this set this to ground perfect and then i can select both of them by shift hold to add another selection then use this um, chamfer or intersect the two elements to clean up your joints like that perfect we have um, our quick shop complete we need to have a slab again a floor slab for this so i'll just manipulate the roof slab we just created by control shift hold i mean control shift d to carry a copy let's move down a copy we can just move it along the way leave it along the way there and then set it to be on the link story set it to be on ground then i'm going to make it at to stay at zero perfect that's what i wanted this wall i can come here on the ground floor i mean that slab and then select this slab we're going to create an apron around this let's uh pick this and offset all edges i'm gonna add a copy oh by the way i don't need to do that you know it i don't need to do that i can just stretch it all the way to the outside like that so that i can have a base of this and turn the edges of this to be at the same as the walls i'm going to go into its settings and change the the edge to be stucco white stucco white rough hit okay perfect nice that's what i want so in in case of the curtain wall we have a horrible looking curtain wall that we need to do but uh, in uh, previously i created some curtain wall 
scheme designs patterns that are very interesting so i'm going to borrow those designs into here so i'm going to select this oh, but before we do that let's uh go to options no window and then uh palettes let's bring in favorites i'm going to load those favorites of our curtain walls so i'm gonna select the curtain wall and let's find uh let's see let's find it open the scheme and i'm going to import it here on the schemes on the scheme folder i'm going to go to the additional settings there import down below and uh let's find um import folder containing xml files because they are xml format not a prf format prf stands for favorites i will just hit import and let's go to the desktop this is the folder 04 hit ok it will load this three let's just import no that is not the one i want let's go back again import import and uh let's go for this curtain or scheme setting design that's the one that i i was looking for then import perfect so this is the folder that i've imported it has this different designs okay so i would use a1 as my design so let's just uh close off this select our our kitten all import sorry open its settings and then on the scheme settings we want to check this scheme favorites right and then uh, there is already what we've created which is this i will load this one double click on it to load it and then hit ok to apply it to our existing curtain wall the changes will be applied there we go or oh, this one it's it has uh the panels are solid so we need to fix that let's go back to the settings and select all the panels i'll select all the panels here on the preview unfortunately the view is it's limited but i can try to compromise by stretching this window like that so to select all these panels I would use the selection criteria of select all vertical and then select all horizontal and change here down below this to be a main panel hit ok that would definitely change it to a class like that perfect so what i need to do is to get rid of this corner there are too many frames on this corner that needs to be uh, uh deleted so i'll select this instead of going to the settings this time around i'm going to hit this edit button and access the edit mode window so that i can select this components manually like that and hit delete perfect so i can hit exit let's see I would want to modify the curtain wall a little bit uh, by going back to its settings and then in terms of the a b's they are four okay let's make it 1.5 with the columns 1.5 1.5 for all of this okay this one I don't know 400 is the correct height let's maybe change it to 500 but normally we have a full class for this you don't have you don't necessarily have to have that let's just go back and get rid of uh this and we have this one at one point or maybe two meters because of the door height right yes something like this that's fine we'll go back again Two meters let's make this one meter perfect so that's basically what we have oh basically this also came back again let's hit edit and uh, select this choose this criteria of select vertical select all vertical and then exit perfect so that's basically what i wanted and i want to create an open here door double door here so i'll select this hit edit and then select this specific panel change it to let's change it to oh sorry just click on this arrow or come here and find a double door double door there let's open its settings there 
what I need to do is to set 2D letter level full and 3D detail level to be full as well. If you move forward to other parameters, I can change the width to be 60. Let's make it 60 millimeters. Again, move to the other parameters and change the handle to whatever style you want. I think that's okay. You can make the same as by overriding the 2D symbol. Change this to dashed, and I think we are good to go. If you apply, okay to apply the changes. That's what you have. Hit exit. Perfect. That's what we created so far. I'm impressed. Perfect. Okay, so we would have two columns here that will support the canopy. That leads us to the second episode or the second part, the third part of our our, our demonstration. So we would have two columns that will be anchoring the canopy from this um, two points. Okay, so let's just go down from the ground and place those columns. Let's place those columns. I will activate the column tool and uh, the structure will be fine at the square column. I'm going to change the material to concrete structure and uh, the size of this column is going to be 230. Let's unlock, let's unlock or link, unlink the dimensions. This side will be 300, fine. Okay, this side will be 300 and then this side will be 500. Hit enter and then place one column here. Make sure it's right on the edge of your door. Let's control D, move it right to the edge, to the wall. And control shift D to carry another column to the side of the kitchen wall. Okay, so if you check on 3D, this column has to be 4.5 meters high. So I'll select the columns. Let's drop them a bit. Negative 300. Okay, and then set it to be 4.8 high. Where is the height for the column? Okay, I might scroll the mouse back. I would say not linked then set this to be 4.8 including the three mid um, negative 300 we've dropped so it's, it has to be 4.8 something like this so it will be waiting for the canopy to rest above or on top of it okay so i could change also the override to black so that i can appreciate this um, like that or you can use this simplified plan kind of perfect it looks impressive already so let's move forward and create the canopy they create the first style the first design concept for the um, uh, gas station okay um previously we've managed to complete our quick shop so now is the time to do the canopy above this um, quick shop so let's go back to the ground and what we need to do is to copy or move here on the sketches the sketch number one which is the style or the design concept number one is this one i'm going to select this uh, 2d lines and copy copy them once they have added to the copy uh, clipboard so let's select this elevation which is i think south elevation right click on it and then open with current view settings to paste that uh, material that we've copied so i'll right click and then just paste there let's wait it for you to paste i'll use the center of the current view to locate this and then i'll just drag them here and then click outside the mark to uh, complete the operation so let's go back again to the ground and uh what okay let's see i think i need to fix no this is fine this can be adjusted or I can just pick this point and stretch the height to there. Okay, anyway, this, this wasn't part of that. So let's go back again to the ground floor. This time around, not on the ground floor because you want to place the canopy using a slab tool. So I'm going to open the upper floor. I'm going to do it on the upper floor, right? And then uh, let's say activate the slab tool 
and scroll down here change the structure uh, to be a um, steel structure just search for steel structure here on the search bar and scroll down make sure the height of this is 800 because we're catering this is uh, going to house if you think items like uh, elements like roof, uh, roof trusses gutters and all the likes so we're going to make it 800 let's draw let's place it by using a rectangle geometry i'm gonna start from this point where the at the corner of the quick shop and then as i'm drawing diagonal like this i'm going to key in the measurement for let's key in the measurement for 1080 which is 10 meters 800 by um, 26 meters long and then hit enter that will be the canopy of this let's escape and then select this i'll add a point here on this edge let's add a point here and then stretch this edge all the way by using offset edge to this distance perfect i think i can maybe yes to this line all right so if you check on 3d we have something like this but the positioning of it is not where we want so i'll select it and then i'll set it um uh, instead of having it linked with the with the upper story let's change it to ground so that we can key in the offset height which is going to be 4.8 perfect no 4.5 uh, 4 but by so doing it will now still not in this in the good position because of the reference plane location if we change to this bottom it will be positioned the way we want this concept is being inspired by tesla um, charging stations so what i need to do is to select this and then chamfer the edges of uh, this slab so i'm going to um, use custom angle and then set the angle to be 50 degrees something like this perfect so that's basically what I want. I know here is going to be a problem because it's not, but it's fine. Let's just leave it the way it is. There, as it is, it looks fantastic. Now is the time for us to do the columns to support this element here. Let's go back to the ground. No, we need to go back to the elevation. Sorry, where we pasted this uh, geometry. So select this sketch and Control D to move it to the position here. Okay. So I need to move it relatively to this side because i'm going to position the pump station or the, the the pump fuel pumps is going to be positioned on the other side there's no way we can have it in the middle or in the center of the column because of the side size so they're going to be positioned on the side side by side so that's why i have to position the column this way so the, the column it's a feature column and there are different ways of creating this column but i've there's only one way i recommend because of the nature of this column, it has intricate uh, 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 intricate details that define the whole concept of this filling station or this gas station. So what I need to do is to activate the Move tool, right? Once we activate the Move tool, hold, press and hold the space bar to activate the magic one and click on the internal geometry and do for the exterior geometry as well and then if you check on 3d you would have this planes positioned right on the position of the elevation marker on floor plane so what i need to do is to select the inner um, geometry select pick it from the surface right to activate the press pull this i'll just extrude it relatively just a sizable distance because I'm just using it for, for cutting a hole to the main uh, collar. So I'll select the main geometry again, stretch it by this one. I'll stretch it by 500, right? And then because I'm going to subtract a hole from this, I would use this select this element, right click. Then there's a tool called Boolean operation. Let's choose subtract feature and then select the element that you want to retain in this case is the column i'll pick it bam that's what we wanted to do i can zoom in here so that i can uh, see it clearly let's just uh, do this okay so before the first thing that i need to do with this column is to change the inner uh, edge color surface let's pick the surface and uh, if you look at on the uh, pet palette there is this 
custom face settings let's click on that and change the surface to paint bodex because that's the whole concept of this um the branding of this uh, uh concept so hit ok i'll go to the next um, surface and do the same and uh, change it to this buttocks hit okay unfortunately in aggregate there's no way you can do this uh, uh, exercise just once i cannot change this elements or the surfaces once so i have to go one by one and pick the surface and adjust that i hope aggregate can improve uh, like other elements i remember on curtain all you can use a select vertically or select horizontally uh, that kind of selection criteria it, it does help uh, to speed up our process so in this case I'll just do this um, like so this is the last one change it to paint products hit ok perfect so the next the next item to define our column is to chamfer the edges these two edges for both sides so to do that i'll pick the edge right and uh, uh, activate fillet chamfer edge then set this to um, 150 radius i want make sure the chamfer option is being selected instead of fillet and then hit ok let's go rotate it to the other side and do the same go for fillet or chamfer hit okay you could also apply to all changes but uh, this we have a specific edges that we are changing not all edges that is why we cannot use apply to all edges all right let's move on to the other side then do the same um, 150 I'll pick this one as well and uh, finish it off perfect now we have a complete feature column as you could see it looks elegant and let's position to the uh, to the to the canopy I'll go back to the ground view and you would see it located on this location or uh, sorry elevation uh, marker so what I need to do is to zoom in on the midpoint I want to control D to pick it from the midpoint to drag it to the position so the is going to be a uh, positioned on the center or the midpoint of the island where the palms are going to be situated so i'm going to also control shift d to copy this by this point and then paste it to the other pump station if we check on 3d that's basically what we have okay so this is impressive guys um let's go ahead and place some pumps like i've created a, a library for this type of architecture uh, as i mentioned earlier on uh in this video so activate the object tool open its settings and then what i need to do is to come here under folders i'll just minimize this folder and find guest station library so in this case i'll go with this guest this pump uh, uh, guest pump dispenser if you look at this the nice part of these objects guys they are optimized for archicad usage unlike the other objects that you are getting it from the foreign or other platforms other platforms like 3d warehouse or sketchup files they are very difficult to edit and um, reuse for this i just created for specifically for aggregate they are optimized for aggregate and they're not heavy as you may think like other foreign objects so as you could see parameters are editable so i'll hit ok and place the object here so i could select the object and Control D, I will align the object by the midpoint of this. I hold Shift and align it to S. Okay, Control D, I want it to be closer to the column, something like this. So if you check on 3D, perfect, it looks great. I think I need to change the color as well to represent the, the brand, <laughs> which is this paint. Uh, thing so open its settings and um, let's come here I, th I think this is the color let's go for paint borax hit okay voila okay it looks fantastic let's again uh, go back to the ground i think i can just move it closer to the column just a bit and then i control shift d use this point for copying and 
placing it to the other station so we have now our filling station concept based on tesla charging stations i need to have now the branding on the canopy so that one i can use a 3d text let's go back again to the ground floor and activate the the object to open settings this we're gonna use just use the default library for text that comes with that arcade level so let's just come here and then set this to be like i said tesla <laughs> i'm promoting tesla yes and uh, change the font to something like relay i would bold again this and then if i scroll down below this uh, text surface i change this to be bodex as well hit ok let's place it on the edge of the canopy here okay before i move it or we can just move it to on the edge like that and then set this to be set this to be 400 so if you check on the elevation its position where is it there we go control d and move it where it's supposed to i think i need to go back to the ground and let's see i think i need to bring it back somewhere here perfect so if you check on 3d you would find that because of this beveled edge it's very difficult to have a straight text to um um placed here so what i need to do is to select this text open its settings i'm going to rotate um under the there is this rotation parameters let's instead of rotation on x make it 50. okay so it went the other way around so we need to change it to negative 50 instead of positive 50. let's see wow it went the other way around but it's fine i like it the way it is but uh, i'll come here on the elevation and rotate it because the angle is the correct one now is the rotate let's just rotate it uh, is it rotate or mirror okay let's mirror it now mirror it vertical and then mirror it vertically like that no way i think let's go back here on the ground and mirror let's mirror it here like so check on 3d i hope this works no way that one is not it's not the what, what i want okay let's just undo okay let's go back to the settings again and see uh, it went uh, 330 uh, I think also I need to rotate it on this. Let's make it 90. No, this won't work. This won't work. I think. Yeah. Sorry about that. I think it's on the Y, if I'm not mistaken. If it does, yes, that's the Y. So let's go for now 180. Wow. 180 degrees. 180 should be fine now perfect that's what i wanted let's go back to the ground and position it let's control d and position it here and if we check on 3d should be fine that's your tesla waiting and uh, i need to open the opposite elevation which is the side elevation of this which is this right click and open with current view settings there we go let's zoom in to see your text select it i'm going to pick it from the midpoint and locate or put it there i'm going to i want it to pierce through this a little bit because i'm going to use this to carve 
or uh, punch a hole to that okay so let's see the magic so i'm going to use the element operation so let's select the slab as an operator or as a target sorry and go to connect solid element operation and select the text edit as an operator i'm going just to use subtraction operation let's hit instead of using use own attributes i would say inherit from the operator because we want this color to be embedded within the card right so i need to change this to inherit from that and hit execute so if i select this text set it to a hidden layer this is what i wanted to achieve voila looks great looks great i could do it on the other side as well but for the sake of this demonstration i don't want to keep this video long and we still have two concepts left to to finish it off okay okay let's move on to the second design um concept so in this case i'm gonna select this and uh, get rid of the element operation and what i need to do is to change or revert it back to the normal slab edge angle which is 90 degrees and then i'll leave it there and let's go back to the ground view once you're here let's move on to the sketches and see the sketches we have here so i'm going to start with this one let's pick this one and that one hit ctrl c to copy this material to the elevation so let's open the south elevation oh we still have the previous uh, concept materials here let's just select this and delete right click to paste a new or the second um design concept features content let's use the center of the current view to paste and then i'll drag it just down below here i'll start by selecting this um this is there's no point of me copying them and bringing them here like basically so i don't know why i have to take you all the way to the, you can still achieve whatever that i'm doing here on ground view or plan view so sorry about that i just wanted you guys to to exercise your your, your muscles right so this time around we're going to use solid element operation let's right click and copy this again and go to the option menu or to the menu bars and then open options let's find complex profile manager and let's create a new profile and call it uh the canopy let's call it canopy profile there we go and i'm going to put it under the steel folder i'm going to set it new as instead of duplicating the existing oh what happened let's say canopy profile right hit ok and then i can there we go it will give us this editing window of this profile so we still have this material but let's just right click and paste our sketch i'll use the center of the current view and then i'll pick this point to position it to the origin point like that and click outside to complete the pasting operation let's select this um uh, whatever dimensions and move them away from your your element so i'm going to i can delete this right let's just delete that and then i'll open the documents view activate the field tool set the material to um steel let's go for steel stainless steel if i want and then i will uh, activate the magic one tool by hold shift click inside of this to fill in with this uh, material and then i will save this by a, a wall and a beam let's hit on save click to close this right once you've saved click to close that and then let's go to the ground or oh, sorry the upper view to place that yes um, come here i would use this line i would come here and activate the beam tool change the structure to complex profile and key in the newly created profile i would use this uh, list view and then here it is our profile and then make sure you choose the geometry method of change so that you can um, place in all points or all corners like that 
that will be that and then complete it to there. He continue because it, it's been positioned or linked with the upper uh, story. So if I had to uh, check on 3D, you find it's some here. So what I need to do is um, select it and activate the suspend group and I can you can either use uh, you can either use uh, the bottom of this to uh, position it or because I'm going to also use this as part of that so I'm going to change select the slab set the slab to be 100 right and then change its material to I want to change the surface to a white kind of finish let's find white I'll just override all of this paint glossy white make sure they are linked for all the surfaces and then hit ok so I would open the south elevation to position this accordingly or I can just do it on a section view let's just do it on section view perfect so here it is now select all this Control D to drag it down on top of or above your slab. So if you check on 3D, that's basically what you have. Okay, that's basically what you have. But we need to also bevel this align to that. So I'm gonna activate uh, the the chamfer corner, make it 50, something like that. Great. So this material also needs to change. I'm going to and suspend groups pick one right click on it and edit selected composite profile let's change the surfaces for this to be uh, green so i'm gonna select this and come here under components selected let's say override surfaces change this to a paint i want paint for forest green then save Okay, and then you can click outside to close this so that it can automatically be applied. There we go. It's been applied. Perfect. So that's basically what I wanted. Now is the time to place some columns. So I'm going to go back to the ground view. And this time I'm not going to use round straight columns. Okay, I'm going to change the structure to circle and set the, the diameter of the column to be 600. 600 or 500 something like that let's just go for 500 and then i'll place it here the column has to be 4.5 high so i'm going to change instead of linking it i'm not going to link it set the height to be 4.5 or let's make it 4.8 and then we drop it down by minus 300 yeah and to make sure it's aligned to the center of this so i'm gonna pick this point drag it to the to the center and then make sure also it's vertically aligned to the center as well Control shift d to use this base point to copy Oh, but before I do that, I can just hit escape. I would copy once I'm done with the other components. So this is how we're going to have our column. So I'm going to select it, change its material to white. We want to change the material to white under segment section. Override the surfaces, like I said, to paint white. Let's find paint white. Make sure all the surfaces are being linked and then hit OK. To apply that perfect let's go back to the ground and do other features for this uh, area we would have uh, this element that is going to be wrapping around our columns projecting overlooking or uh, on our dispenser on our gas uh, palms or fuel palms so i'm going to activate the shell tool because i'm going to use shell tool and then hold your magic wand tool which is the okay before you do that make sure the geometry method is the the first one which is extruded and then construction method i'm going to change to this one we're going to change the structure to just a basic and set this to be steel structural material okay and uh, the rest this is going to be 600 if i'm not mistaken and i'm going to change the surface to be 
paint let's override the surfaces again to be paint forest green link all the surfaces hit ok and i can uh, hold press and hold your spacebar key to activate the magic wand and then click on the lines the extrusion is going to be one point let's make it 1000 right let's select it select it and then flip i'm going to flip by scrolling here let's find flip the flip to the outside perfect so i'm going to control d to drag it to the elevation views here somewhere here and then open this um, south elevation view let's see let's see where is it here it is i'm going to rotate because here should be the downside of it the, the bottom or uh, yeah the bottom part of our our item so i'm going to uh, rotate control e to rotate rotate it vertically like that now we need to position it down here and we need again to open let's check on a uh, plane view so that we can rotate it let's rotate it again there are a lot of rotations in this one but it's just to rotate to orientate it the way we want right and then from this side we need to open this elevation right click so that we can also rotate it for the last time here it is No, we're supposed to go back to the south elevation. Sorry, sorry about that, guys. Because when we rotate it on the ground floor, this is how it became. So what we need to do is to control E to rotate it uh, horizontally like this. And then I can now control M to mirror it to the other side. Let's mirror it like that. And I'm going to position it to the column. This has to go all the way. I will stretch this point so that it can pierce through the slab like that. Perfect. So if you check on 3D, that's what you have. But now we need to position to the to the station. Let's come here and select this. Zoom in there. Control D it from there and make sure it's centrally positioned perfect so if you check on your 3d that's basically what we created so this is what i wanted okay but for this type of view i think we need to move this a uh, little bit back in the side so i would select this two and then control g to group them Go back on the plane view. Let's control D to bring them somewhere here. I can also use an elevation to align that, but I think as far as I'm concerned, it should be fine. For the sake of this thing. Oh, the column didn't move. What the <laughs> so let's go back to the south elevation. I think that's the best way to position this. So I'm gonna check this column. Let's move it here. Or you could use the midpoint of this, which is uh, this one. Let's do the right thing. Yes. Okay, the second step is now to place our dispenser or our fuel pumps. Okay, and let's do that. Go back to the ground and uh, activate the object tool. Let's activate the object tool, open its settings, and let's find let's find the library for gas station. This time around, I'm gonna go with this pump, and uh, yeah, let's hit OK. I'll place the elements here, select it, align it to the center of the column. Okay, so. I think yeah the distance it makes sense it has to be somewhere there position or maybe not closer to something like this let's see on 3d perfect 
this is great now we need to optimize our object so let's set the object to zero the height of it and then um, we need to set the uh, branding of it to match the same for the uh, column sorry for the for the entire structure so i'm gonna change this blue part to be paint forest green see my blessed with this one and hit okay we should be fine now perfect should be fine now great now we can think of a roof because as it is now it won't work because we can use these columns to to carry water from the top or to the downside okay but before we do that let's just select three of this control G to group them so that we can place it to the other station let's unsuspend groups like that control shift D pick the position to copy and the same position to place okay that's great I like it so a check on 3d they should be now all in like I was saying in the roof to the roof section like I was saying we have to come up with a way to drain water from here so I'm going to say um, the upper flow open the upper flow I'm going just to use a normal roof let's just pick a normal roof tool and change the construction method to uh, the complex one right and then I'll pick points make sure the structure is basic yeah the the material doesn't matter for now or you could just change but doesn't matter i'll pick this point as i'm drawing like just roofing a a house so like that and then do this perfect so i'll select this stretch this overhang by picking this point and use offset all edges to the inside like that perfect so if you check on 3d <laughs> it's horrible so let's select our roof and open its settings i want to make the edges of it to be straight by activating this uh line and then hit ok so change the thickness of it by scrolling here you find the thickness change the thickness to 50 okay so we can uh, drop it down to let's just drop it down like that let's just drop it down like that it's interesting right i know it looks horrible no but that's not what i meant gents let's uh, change the angle to five degrees and that will complete our design maybe 1.5 height yeah something like this no i think 1.6 yes okay something like this so we could have this as a gutter and collect water from that but we are not yet done with we have to have some um sheet roof sheets or roof finish up on top of this so i'll right click and split this into roof planes and then hit ok so once i'm done i'll select this guys make sure they are ungrouped right all the suspend groups is active and then you go to design um design extras accessories roof accessories to place your roof sheets we don't have the library place as you can see there's nothing here we go back let's close it and then go here under files library and objects library manager to add our accessories library let's hit add and go to the PC, your local disk i'll open that let's go for program files grab soft Akika 26 that's the one i'm using and then choose the accessory library 26 like that i have this made our uh, libraries placed like i said check the link in the description to download this library the human figure and guest station and two to the uh, site plan trees check the link in the description and download all those or just download the the entire template that i've set for you for this project and then i'll hit ok to apply um the library once you are done once the library is done we go back to placing the sheets let's wait for it to load let's wait it for it to load all 
All right, so I'm gonna go back again to design and design extra sort of accessories. Then um, you would find your roof surface are now visible. So let's um, this is this is an add-on that comes with um, you can download it from the Arcade uh, or Gravisoft website, guys. It's a free add-on for Arcade. It's called um, Arcade Goodies. So each and every version has Arcade Goodies. Go to the their uh, website graphisoft.com and find the downloads you'd find the architect goodies okay you can just search from google saying architect goodies they will give you or architect goodies suit you would see the link to download that so i'll check the roof surfacer and then change the stainless steam to trapezoid sheet make it detailed here and then i'll change the background pen to screen the fill pen to be uh, great this doesn't matter even the control pen doesn't matter so once you're done make sure the layer is the correct layer in this case i don't think i have a roof layer for this okay here we have and then i can hit okay to place your roofing sheets like that perfect so we almost came to the end of this uh, design but we need to have a feature where we can place the 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 signage so let's go back to the ground and then do that so i'm going to use the same method we used to create the columns so i'll zoom here this is the geometry for that i will activate again the shell tool let's activate again the shell tool and the time around let's change the thickness to be something small maybe 150 or 200 okay and then i can just oh even the color let's change the surface to be a white surface let's go for a white surface hit closely make sure you change all the surfaces okay and then activate well, magic one by press and hold the space bar click on the this item i think one meter 1.2 let's go for 1.2 perfect so we need to select this item and flip the reference location or the reference line like this i think 150 is too much let's make it 150 or 100 what do you think 100 let's see oh perfect so i'm gonna move it Control d to move it uh to next to any elevation so that we can rotate it unfortunately we had to go this uh route again so from south elevation let's identify it there it's unfortunate because you cannot use the shell tool on on elevations i could have just used it uh, or done it on elevations because it's already rotated but uh, Akia doesn't give us that platform. I hope for the next versions it will allow us to do that. So I'll control E and then use, this is the, the, the bottom part of it. And then I'll rotate it to the up like that. Okay. And then I'll go to the ground and make sure it's been rotated again. Where is it? Oh, it went up. It went to the upper story. Let's open that. There we go. I'm going to select it make sure you move it to the place what do you think i think we need to also open this elevation to determine its its location right click and open with current view settings and check that okay my laptop now is starting to struggle a little bit because uh, i've over i've overwhelmed it with the uh, this kind of uh, information so i need to mirror it is it mirror or rotate control e to rotate it let's rotate it i'll pick the vertical rotation and do it that way perfect and then i'll control d and pick it from this point zoom in here place it there all right let's move it down i'll move it down by eight millimeters and then move it to the left by also eight millimeters just to position it nicely okay here it is so if we check on 3d you would have your signage um, item placed like that so we can mirror a copy to the other side let's go back oh we need to do it on the upper floor let's go back here Control shift m to mirror a copy i would use this ridge for the roof place it to the other side should be there yeah control d again to move it relatively to this corner just for the sake of uh the 
okay that's the second design option guys you could go ahead and use um, the text 3d tool like we used for Tesla uh, concept kind of design and then place some signage here but uh, other than that this is impressive uh, team I'm really impressed with the results okay so let me know in the comment section guys what you think about this before we move on to the third or the last um, design option for the petrol station okay um for the third design or for the third design concept um i just deleted the previous concept which is was the column features here and then remain with the slab it's because this we're gonna base our design is going to be based on the slab what i can do here is to pick this edge and use um, offset edge to offset it all the way to there and then i'll pick this point by moving this node to that corner just to make it cleaner and then this is what we're going to have in terms of the third design so let's go back to the ground floor and then within the ground floor when i move here to the sketches as you could see the third option has a um, couple of sketches here that are interesting to derive our form from so let's activate the shell tool because we're going to still use the shell tool the geometry method is going to remain the same to extrude it and the construction method also going to be detailed the structure is going to be basic the steel structural is going to be the name of the material okay so the thickness is going to be 300 and uh, let's uh, come here and activate the magic one by press and hold space bar key and click to the element so this will take the width or the length of the canopy i think if i remember it's 26 meters if i'm not mistaken a subject which i can come and edit the length as well i'll hit ok and i'll do the same to this element for the quick shop because this is going to be for the quick shop it's going to be five meters based on the width of the the shop and then hit ok so once we're done with this let's take these two elements Control d and uh, drag them to the view or the elevation view and what we need to do is uh, before we can even rotate let's appreciate the uh, context right so this needs to rotate based on the side both of them we're going to open this elevation from the side to rotate them so this elevation is going to be i think it's east elevation if i'm not mistaken i can just open it from the browser just like that let's come down here and fit in the window i'm going to increase the size of the elevation or oh, i can just select these two drag them somewhere here let's control e to rotate i'll pick the side rotate it to the edge like that and i'm going to control d again drop the, bring it down to the level of uh to the level of a floor finish okay so that's basically if we check on 3d we have this kind of arrangement let's go back to the ground plan view in order for us to position this i'll start with the quick shop let's pick i'll pick the parameter i'll pick the control d and pick it to align it with the structure of the quick shop like that Make sure it sits on the right um, measurements so i can control d again move this back to here let's see i think we need again an extra move let's do this no i think let's undo i think it's sitting in the perfect position once we are done with that let's come back to the main canopy feature control D and drag it from this corner to this edge of the shop and then make sure it sits right yeah I think it's around 26 meters you could see as you can see so if you check on 3d we'll see something like this right okay that's what I wanted to achieve but uh, for the quick shop we can quickly change some other some items here because i see the width of this is slightly uh bigger that will mean can change the entire structure so that is fine let's start with the canopy first okay 
Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is to select this, open its settings. I'm going to change the, uh, the color to a red color. Let's find paint vermilion. Where is this? This is the one. Make sure this all services are linked. Then hit OK to apply the changes to our to our shell. So now let's see where our our sketches on the ground will come into play. So I'm going to select these two sketches control c to copy it to the clipboard and then to the copy board and then we can uh, open back again this elevation once we have this elevation let's control and paste this element here center let's use the center of the screen to paste it i'm going to pick from this corner and then push into that corner okay so i will make sure this sits right on top of the let's stick outside so that you can fix the other issues so i want this to be right on top of our our flow level so we have this it has to sit right on top of here so what i need to do is to select both this and the item okay now accept the island and then drag to the up something like that okay so for the for the element let's bring it back i think we made a mistake it has to sit right there number one perfect so i would stretch this line or this curve this sketch let's stretch it all the way to here Either way, it has to go beyond the element because we're using it just to extrude. Okay. And I don't know why this one. This would have to stretch. Let's modify this corner all the way to this corner. It has to be positioned like that. Once we're done, this is the time for the magic, guys. Um, I'll start by selecting the shell itself, right? But before that, for in order for us to see clearly these lines i will change this to a uh, one of these graphic override combinations right there we go we see this right giant shell element so let's perform our magic and try to carve this geometry into our shell so i'm gonna select the shell right click and create a hole in shell by so doing i'm going to click and hold the space bar and then click on on the line like that to create a hole so i can regenerate that cut as you see let's do it again from this side all right click create a hole shift and hold space bar sorry so hold space bar key to activate that and then click on the line like i said you hold um space bar once you've created a hole you right click right and then create a hole and you hold space bar then click on the line or sketch that you want to use to generate form based on so that's basically it so if you escape and check this on 3d you have a giant geometry like this for your canopy which is very impressive <laughs> it's interesting it's fascinating so what i need to do is to select this edge and then bring it back inside maybe by 500 let's see 500 to do the job i think we need to another 500 let's see under side oh that was too much 500 to us we can bring it back by 400 all right so it has to be all the way it has to fill in this gap because you can see there's a gap between the two elements so let's just pick one of the points here and then activate the hand uh, stretch the height then click to reference with that perfect so that's basically what i wanted right okay so from here what you can do now is to set this um gas pump or the fuel pump to um, reflect the design so i'll go here under services instead of having this green um, style i'll go for paint vermilion for both paint vermilion 
where there is just a forest, a paint green forest, it will change. Perfect. I'll have, I'll have something like this. Very impressive. Okay, so before I do the branding and all the stuff, let's come here to the what you call to the quick shop. Okay, so let's see how we can transform this into a very interesting uh, stuff. I'll go up to, to the ground and what I need to do is to modify because I see the sketch wasn't um, it's not the same length to what it's on the ground. So I would go for this. Let's kill this um, line of the curtain wall by just doing this and uh, make sure all the oh sorry I'll take this wall stretch it all the way to here then I can take this also stretch all the way to this corner and let's um, get rid of this wall because we're gonna have just a giant curtain wall there I'm going to stretch all the way to Okay, so I can reduce the length of this um, walls to be inside. So I'll use this adjust and then I'll trim a line based on this panel, something like that. I think it has to adjust all of it, yeah, except this one. I don't know why it didn't. Okay, let's just do it manually. That can happen. So if we confirm it on 3D, we must have this area filled now. Okay, we're getting rid of this wall and then that wall and also our slab because we have roof already based on that. Okay, so I think the offset should be on zero. Oh, sorry about that. It went, <laughs> should be, let's undo. I'm going to just uh, bring it back to and then I'm going to get rid of this slab as well because we already have the horizontal plane for the, for the slab. Something like this. Um, for this side, because we have doors, because we have doors on this side, we have to now create openings on this shell in order for us to project those um, doors. But for the internal walls, let's just select all of them and then make sure I stretch them to the underside of the top part like that. And then in order for us to, okay, even the curtain wall has to go all the way to the underside of this, something like that. Let's say we, uh, I think I want to solve this issue of the doors. So I'm going to come here on the ground instead of having this as 230, okay, this wall as 230, I'm going to make it um, 150, okay, let's make it 150 and then open this elevation and cut off the openings for that. So I'm going to select this elevation, right click and open with current view settings. Once we're done with that, uh, we're going to draw some sketches that will determine our cutting to that. So here it is. Let's say um, draw a documents. Let's go to documents and draw a polyline. I'm going to draw a, a, a box of 900 by 2 meters. That's the size of a door. So and then I need to locate where the doors are. So in order for me to achieve that, let's maybe change this to a let's change this to a i want to make the, an x-ray let's create an x-ray of this i will uh, go to view options and 3d views wireframe oh we cannot have a wireframe on, on 2d okay so okay i can move this temporarily out like that and uh align this to to the doors like that that will solve that problem just as offset this 
and then offset that. I'm gonna just do it for only the doors on the side. The other side, I will leave the rest to you to complete that. So let's move back our our shell feature. It needs to be perfectly aligned like that. Okay, so let's create that magic again. Right click, create a hole and space bar hold and click on the line right do the same thing create a hole in shell and shift hold i mean uh, uh space bar hold and then click on the line okay so now we have created some openings we've changed 3d view to wireframe let's go back or turn back to the simple shading with shadows okay here what this is why we what what we created in terms of the openings okay i'll leave the rest for you to do but by the way this side we didn't have that kind of a situation this wall also has to go all the way to the underside of the top material just like that okay so we're left with one last um um design detail so we need to more like recess this um curtain wall. so I'll go here underground then uh, let's um uh, take let's zoom in so that you can see let's take uh, this curtain wall move it back let's move it back by 300 right and then i could do the same to stretch back the walls back by 300 as well we we'll use the adjust tool and then I'll draw a line to adjust. Let me see if the line makes sense. Okay, doesn't make sense. Let's redo it again. Adjust. And then I'll draw it from here all the way to there. All the wall have been adjusted. So if you check on 3D, you have now a recess to your you have now a recess to your the funny part of that element it would now uh, create a hole to the other side that's the um, disadvantage of it you could use solid element operation to create this instead of um, piercing through all sides so but by the sake of this I'll just leave it the way it is you could use solid element operation and create an operator which by a slab then you can use um, subtraction with the uh, just subtraction operation okay so what i want now to do is to turn this into a louvert kind of um curtain wall. let's go back here to the settings and then under schemes what i need to do is to set this to be 150 the height of the rows to be 150 millimeters something like this and then can hit okay wait for the changes to apply there we go we can go ahead and create now the doors let's come here and create doors and the best way is to do it on elevation so i would open the south elevation south elevation view there we go let's just zoom in here i'll select this and then hit on edit let's activate uh, i'll select all of this frame Let's select all these frames on this category, on this section. Now we just do that by sh uh, shift hold to add parameters to a height of 2.1. I just want the height of a door. Okay. So I can go. Let's just go, 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 go. Yeah, I guess this will be fine. I guess this will be fine. I can delete on a keyboard to remain with this panel. So this panel already we've added a door previously, so that is why it's automatically adding a door to that. So I just need to select this and open its settings. I can see the, the lock side or the handle is lower, it's down. So I need to check that. I think I need to go back here. Here it is the position of it in terms of the height should be at least 1.2 wait for the changes perfect okay that's what i wanted 
I can hit exit the edit mode check the result on 3d you would have as many doors you would want for example if you want access to this area you could also provide a door here so i'll leave that to you as well so let's now move on to the branding side of it but before we move branding side of it we need to have the pumps in all stations because this is more like an industrial um uh, uh, petrol station so i'll mirror this copy to the other side let's go here on the ground and achieve that i'm going to zoom out like that and then let's select this oh sorry select the fuel pump and the the lines The markers on the floor control shift m i'm going to use uh, i'm going to use this length to mirror to mirror a copy okay so i need to modify this one we have to go okay i will just delete this these ones i made a mistake by mirroring everything once but uh, i needed to mirror the pump separately so i'll select the pumps so that i can use this column as a center of my mirroring okay so that you check on 3d you have something like this so because of the size of uh, the canopy we need to modify the position of our of our islands so I can do it on 3D or just on the ground. Let's use the column as a center point. So I'll pick, I'll pick it from there. I'm going to use the column as that so that this rests on top of our, our slab like that. Perfect. This is crazy, guys. I love it okay let's do the branding side of it um, i'm sure you've seen um, the introduction of this video you saw the branding of this right giant uh, feature so i'll start with the kiosk first or the quick shop i'll have a banner here or a signage here so that one i'm going to achieve it on the elevation i'm going to open the south elevation view and i'm going to draw a polyline using a box I'm going to draw a geometry of uh, maybe four meters by 500 okay and then i can now bevel or make convert the edges of the sides to a curve by 250 by also 250 the side and then i'm going to use a move tool activate the move tool and hold space bar to activate the magic wand and then click on this Okay, so let's take this up to the position it's supposed to be of this height, right? Somewhere there. And then I'm going to open its settings and change the material to paint vermilion, this red color. Yes, check on 3D. Obviously, it won't be positioned here. Um, horizontally it's going to follow the the elevation position so I'm going to pick the surface to extrude or push and pull by something small even 50 it's great okay so go to the ground and position it where it's supposed to so let's find it to the elevation here it is Let's select it control d let's move it to the position there it's going to sit right on the curtain wall okay so once you've done that it's the time for us to create or have some writing on it let's have some writing. i think i can increase also the extrusion by maybe 20. okay yeah, let's have some writing on it so i'm going to go to the ground again and activate the object tool we're going to use 3d text to achieve this let's open the settings 
and search for 3D text. Let's search for 3D text, which is this one. I'm going to um, call this Mesolite Visual Station or just Mesolite Visual just for the sake of this tutorial and then I'll change the font type to Relay Western make it bold also to make it bold go back go down here and change the surface to paint white and okay let's apply it to this side I'll take it and then move it and dock it on the surface of the that let's change the size to 300 yes and then i would uh, change the thickness let's pick this point to change the thickness to something like that so if we go back to the this elevation to position the height let's position the height of it okay here it is we need to select it and control d move it to the place okay so I'll go back to the ground and try to position it um, horizontal centrally to the element so I'll find that center point which is this and then I can move it to drag by that so on 3d it will look like this you see it I think it's fantastic perfect I'm impressed okay so um, we would have another banner here and then we have another one at the top so let's go back just to finalize or complete our our design so I would control shift D to copy this text let's bring it here and then rotate control E to rotate then rotate it vertical like that control D to position it right on the side of this element something like this if we check this on 3d so we're gonna have something like that you could leave it the way it is if you want but i want to have an abbreviation of mesolite which is going to be um let's come here and then change it to msv okay let's see how it look change the size to bring it back to one meter it's too small 1.5 and then I'm going to rotate let's go back to the settings and under the rotation of uh, x y let's rotate this no is it y let's rotate this by 50 yes this is what I like and then I'll open this elevation to align it the way I want this supposed to be elevation east west elevation right Perfect. Let's find it. I'll select it and then Control D to move it right to the position like that. That's where I want it. Okay. I can drag it down a bit. Something like that. Maybe just to be perfect. Just to be perfect. If you check on 3D, yeah that's what I wanted okay so you could mirror this to the other side but uh, for this I won't do that let's um, take again that let's take this again Control shift D to make a copy this time around let's just place it here and then change the we want to to be on a flat surface let's rotate it to be um, zero and then the rotation of uh, this supposed to be zero as well on the Y let's make it zero perfect and then I'm going to control D to pick this point and position it here let's um, I think first of all we need to identify the size of it so I'm gonna check this section and drag it to cut across there right click to open the section or we still have it here open 
there we go with our section we want to locate that let's change the graphic override down below here to GOC gray black in order for us to see that here is our our text Control D to drag it to the top it has to sit right on the top of this let's move it there you see using section to model is also important because you identify errors like this so in this case I would uh, control D and move this align all the way to here and then um, I would right click to bring in solid element operation so that this can be a target let's use the shell component as the operator and then I'm going to just I'm going I'm going to just use subtraction operation to clean up this so now we have this kind of um, cleaning which is important so this also needs to be um, uh, elevated or on the right height okay so that's what i want you could see now my sections are very clean if you model this way you won't go wrong with your construction documentation so i advise you always to be um, using the views different views to assemble your project because they'll give you what's the ground view for example or elevation view won't give you all right so this i'm going to is either increase the size of it to maybe say six meters it's going to be huge perfect that's basically this thank you for joining us on this journey through ArchiCAD and the world of architecture design. I hope you find inspiration and courage to pursue your passion for creating stunning designs using the power of technology. No matter where you are in your ArchiCAD journey, remember that every great architect started somewhere. Embrace the learning process and don't be afraid to explore new possibilities. ArchiCAD opens the door to endless opportunities for creativity and innovation. As you move forward, remember that architecture is not just about designing structures, it's about shaping the spaces where people live, work and dream. Your designs have the potential to impact life and leave a lasting legacy. So let your imagination soar and with ArchiCAD as your trusted tool, turn your visions into reality. Take what you've learned here and apply it to your future projects, whether it's a petrol station or a residential building or a monumental structure. Always be open to learning and growing as the world of architecture and technology is constantly evolving. Surround yourself with like-minded individuals, seek inspiration from the world and around you, and never hesitate to ask questions. Thank you once again for joining us. May your journey with ArchiCAD spread far and wide, inspiring others to embrace their passions, overcome their fears, and create breathtaking designs that shapes the world for the better. The future of architecture is in your hands, so go forth and design wonders.